Hi, I'm Glenn from uh, Games by Playdate, and I'm here with this month's game, The Raccoon is at the Candy Shop. The Raccoon is at the Candy Shop is a Hidden Rolls Cold War worker placement game set in a Beatrix Potter universe. All the players are spy masters for one of the two superpowers during the Cold War, and your job is to take the five greatest spies in the world, the Raccoon, Nice Kitty, Sly Fox, Lazy Dog, Old Bear, send them on missions to different locations, uh, and then debrief them when they return from those missions. Your goal is at the end of the game to have the most number of spies uh, switched over to your side of the war. Um, but you don't have really sharp abilities to, to get this done. You have to influence them subtly throughout the game. The Raccoon is at the Candy Shop came about because uh, my comic book dealer uh, told me a dumb thing that he had heard this week, which is the phrase, the raccoon is at a candy shop, and then he challenged me to make a game out of it. This is kind of something that we do, and it provides inspiration for a number of games of mine. Um, and then within a few minutes, I was like, all right, well, the raccoon could be a code word for a spy, and the candy shop, you know, would be a code word for, like, Berlin, so we're going to set it during the Cold War. I had just been re-watching the show The Americans, which is a great espionage show. And I've always loved spy movies like the Presidio and stuff like that. So I thought it would be really cool to make a, a spy craft game. And there really aren't a lot of them out there. I think it's a really rich theme. And it goes really well with Hidden Roles, which is something that I really wanted to get into uh, in game design. So the way that you play the raccoon is at the candy shop is, let's say for instance you had four players. Two players would be capitalist and two players would be communist and they would be dealt cards at the beginning of the game telling them what side of the Cold War they're on. Now they don't know who's on their team and who is their enemy. They're also going to be dealt a card that tells them who their target is, which one of the great spies uh, in the Cold War. Um, the raccoon gets two cards because he is the greatest spy. You're going to have a set of tokens that represent your ability to influence people. So you might have some communist tokens and some capitalist tokens. And then you're also going to, every turn, draw action tokens. These are specific things that happen on missions, uh, like assassination attempts, or communist brainwashing, or uh, bombs going off, or the spy turning out to be in disguise. And uh, what will happen is that every person gets the ability to be the first player once, and the first debriefer once, which is actually a really strong position. So the first player is going to take a spy, he's going to place him at a location on the board, and then everyone's going to get a chance to, to vote on that location. And what they would do is like, let's say I was capitalist, uh, I might take my two capitalist influence and place it face down at that location, and everyone else might also do something similar to that, or place some actions. And then we'd go around the table, place a spy, vote on that spy's actions, place a spy, vote on the spy's actions, until all the spies that are still alive or available have been placed. And then the first debriefer would go, uh, and he would remove a spy from the board and collect all of the tokens that had been voted on that, kind of shake them up, throw them down, and then determine uh, what happened on that spy's mission. So the ability to debrief the spy is actually really uh, where the real power in the game lies. Because if I have a number of actions like uh, one that says double agent and one that says bribe or things like uh, that or one that's a disguise, the order in which I take those actions could really, uh, can really change the result of, of where that spy's alignment goes. So, the Raccoon is at the Candy Shop is a game that we've been working on for a month and a half, two months, and we've dialed it way in. Uh, we've got some really, really great art from Ashley McCarty, who did these awesome illustrations for us, uh, as well as some cool little location cards that tell you the different places of the, of the world that we also did in kind of that watercolor style, just to give it almost that fantastic Mr. Fox feel. Um, We've got these lacquered uh, wooden cubes that we've placed the different spies on so you can tell what their alignment is and place them on the board. And, you know, we've got some nice, nice tokens that you can use to vote with them. All in all, I think this is a solid uh, project. I'm really happy with the way that this design turned out. And 
you get to the second turn in this game and people start to go, oh, okay. I gotta do this. And that's always a really awesome sign when we see people doing that in the game. They don't feel completely lost, they just it starts to click with them how they could how they can do what they want to do as a as a communist or a capitalist in the game. So I hope people enjoy it. Um, it's available free uh, on our website, gamesbyplayday.com, if you want to download it and print it out yourself. Uh, it has all the latest art. It's uh, it's a completely finished product. Of course, we'd appreciate it if people would be Patreon backers. Um, it's not a lot of money each month, and we send you uh, a new game each month. So you should do that. <laughs>